Hello today and today I'm going to be talking about a James Bond legend my favorite James Bond and also a great actor um, Sir Roger Moore yes he was my favorite James Bond no doubt about it not saying all the others were bad because there wasn't um, except for George Lazenby I won't talk about him <laughs> but you know to me I know um, people are going to have their favorite bonds in different reasons you know everyone's entitled to their own opinion once again well they always are anyway I'm not gonna differ with that I'm to be you know Sean Connery was a great James Bond he was the original James Bond um, um, what's the one off bloody hell Timothy Dalton I'm he, I know he only done two but he wasn't too bad he weren't bad at all I thought he made a um, okay James Bond to be honest with you I enjoyed both of his films um, then we had uh, Pierce Brosnan I thought he was a good James Bond Daniel Craig I suppose he'd be good but I just find his films a little bit too dark it, to me it ain't I don't know I just don't feel the James Bond connection there with his films for some reason I just think they're just no different from a normal movie or film but with, with the James Bonds like Sean Connery to uh, Pierce Brosnan there was something a different there was a different atmosphere about the films um, something I don't know it's hard to explain but I, I, I thought they were great I, I like the James Bond films I'm always a big fan of James Bond so I've even got the blu-ray box set of it but I'm going off at a tangent I'm supposed to be talking about Roger Moore and his films as we can see we can see the t-shirt um, what does that say it's the biggest and the best it's Bond and beyond and that's the spy who loves me mate bought me this t-shirt for my birthday um, yes the spy who loved me it was up there one of my favorite James Bond films um, I honestly thought all the Roger Moore's James Bond films were great there's not one of them that I did not like all his films were brilliant these all his James Bond films were absolutely brilliant it's films that you can watch over and over again and they'll never get boring Sean Connery's films on the other hand um, there was a few that I did not really like like Thunderball people were going to frown at me for this probably you know I just found it a little bit too boring for my liking um, I don't know what, what I just couldn't gel with that film for some reason I, if I was going to pick a Sean Connery film I would say it was either oh god one with a oh, I can't well was it every time I'm on fucking camera I can't think it's like I've been put under pressure or something like that um, Ah, one with a spaceship, uh, fucking hell, you only live twice, that was one of my favourite Sean Connery films, or either that or um, his, his last one, no, I'm not talking about, when I'm talking about James Bond, I'm talking about the official uh, Ion ones, Eon or whatever the company's called, I'm not talking about ne um, the spin-offs or the, the other, nothing to do with the Aeons or whatever the company's called, the official James Bonds, I'm not talking about Never Say Never Again or the original Casino Royal. I'm not talking about because they were an official James Bond films. Um, that or Diamonds Are Forever, the favourite Sean Connery films I liked. I'm not saying I did not like the others. I thought they were, you know, they were good films. From Russia with Love were, was one that I didn't really get on with too well. Um, <sighs> his famous one, Goldfinger. One would have asked mine. Yes, it Goldfinger. I said it. Yeah, that was a good film. Um, yeah, he had an Aston Martin. Didn't you? And also something else. Roger Moore made the most films. He was the mo He made the most films. Once again, people are going to argue and say no. Sean Connery also made seven films. I am not including Never Say Never Again because that was not an official James Bond film by Ian. You know the copy. Cubby Brooklyn um, Company um, and Harry H. Saltzman. I know the partnership broke up. Um, yeah, I'm talking about the official. So, 
Roger Moore made the most. He made seven films. Sean Connery made six. Um, who was the next? Pierce Brosnan and um, Daniel Craig are tied at the moment with four. Um, Pierce, Pierce Brosnan? Or did you just say Pierce Brosnan? Um, Timothy Dalton made two. And the worst, George Lazenby, which thankfully he only made one. Um, and um, yeah, as I said, Roger Moore made the most. And not one of his films, not one of his films, he had an Aston Martin. I apologise for the screaming in the background if you can hear that. Um, I've got my window open because it's so baking not in here. I've had to turn off my fan because it makes too much noise. Otherwise, it would just sound you hear a horrible fan noise in the camera. I know it's not fantastic, but I thought I'd suffer. See, I've got the sun a bit. Um, but I'm not shutting the window. It'd be too dark to be out of oven in here. Yeah, uh, yeah, not one of his films, Roger Moore drove, did not have an Aston Martin. Wasn't issued one by Q. Um, with all the other James Bond films, including George Lazenby, all had an Aston Martin in their films. Um, I think they all had the DB5. They all had the DB5, um, except for Timothy Dalton. He didn't have a DB5. Um, all the rest had a DB5 in their films. Obviously, Roger Moore didn't. He didn't even have an Aston Martin. But he, the thing is, it did not matter because that was well and truly made up for when he got his Lotus Esprit. Now, I honestly thought that Lotus Esprit, one of my favourite all-time James Bond cars, it is a nice car. Um, and he had, he only had two. Uh, no, I was saying I, I said, said that wrong. Um, only two films that Roger Moore had a James Bond car. Um, but he had three in total. He had three Lotus Esprits. Yes, he did have three Lotus Esprits. He had one in... Um, first of all, it appeared in... Um, oh, duh, I'm wearing a T-shirt. Spy loves me when uh, Carl went into the water. Turned into a submarine. You know, that's the first time we saw that spree. And yes, I do know the story how, how the, um, I won't, I know I saw the Top Gear um, when Roger Moore was on Top Gear, he done a Top Gear special. Um, so I know the story how the Lotus Spree, how that got into James Bond, um, got into the James Bond franchise. So I know about that. Um, also, he had two Lotus Sprees in. For your eyes only. Yes, he had two. He had a white one, what got blown up with the, with the security system when he smacked when um, one of the baddies smashed the windows. The car exploded, and I had to make <laughs> brilliant scene. That was brilliant scene when he had to run and you know the woman lured him. Well, he didn't. She didn't lure him. But he was running away from the bad guys and <laughs> his facial expression. <laughs> When he saw that Citroen 2 CV, <laughs> it's just his, it's his face was absolutely brilliant when he saw that car. He thought, <laughs> brilliant! His facial expressions were brilliant when, oh, that's why it was my favourite James Bond. It was just his moments, his timing, brilliant. Brilliant is, I just, ah. Oh. That's why I watch these Bonds all the time. They just never will ever get boring. It's just a, it's, it's, it's serious. Of course, he is serious in his um, his role, but he had his light moments. That's what I liked about it. Especially his one-liners. <laughs> so I liked a bit in, in Moonraker. Um, it was the first scene when they're in, a, in the aeroplane. <laughs> And the bad guy shoots the oh before he shoots the controls. This is where we leave you, Mr. Bond. It's a little premature, isn't it? <laughs> it's just brilliant. <laughs> There's other moments. Oh, I just can't think of the uh, top of my head. But the... yeah, just Roger Moore, absolutely brilliant. Um, as I say, in his cars, I think I'm just trying to recap on his 
um, his films. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he was. It was only two films that he got a James Bond car. Uh, you know, he was issued with a car. Um, I can't think of any. Oh, let's just go for Live and Let Die. He wasn't issued with a car, but that was. I'd say that was one of my best. One of my best um, films. That was just brilliant. <laughs> First role was James Bond, and I think he took that role on very well. That's an unforgettable film. I mean, the speedboat chase was brilliant. Um, I mean, the stunts were real. I mean, the guy, the stuntman that ran around, ran across those crocodiles or alligators, wherever they were. You know, I saw the um, the bonus the bonus disc, uh, the bonus features what come with the discs. You know. I think it took about three or four takes to do that um, running across the alligators or crocodiles you know it took a few takes and you know that was very dangerous but someone did that for real it's brilliant the stunts at least they were real back then you don't get nothing like that these days in films they're just crap CGI I know CGI is great but I just think CGI goes over the top sometimes I just Okay, yes, in sci-fi films it's great to have CGI, but when you got to a, like a <coughs> when you burp or something like that, and you want CGI, no, I'm joking by the way, but <laughs> you, you know, I, I think James Bond films they don't want that CGI. They don't want to go down that route, which is great. Um, I don't know. I, know um, I thought the Moonraker, or I thought back in the day, that was really, really great. The way your yeah, special effects was and. You know, they did that themselves. They was going to go to the people that make um, the Star Wars Industrial Light and Magic, but they were charging too much. So they did their own special effects, and I think they've done a very, very good job on it. Especially when you have um, John Barry's soundtrack in the background. Brilliant. Brilliant. I mean, he did most of the soundtracks for the James Bond films. I think his soundtracks are absolutely brilliant. Um... He didn't do Spy Loves Me, that was, Mar what's his name, Marvin Hamlish or something like that? He, he, I think he, he just done Spy Loves Me, but I think his score was pr perfect for the film. I, I think it was perfect, because um, he does that more of electrical um, synthesised stuff, and I think that fitted the film. Um, yeah, some other, I think Sp uh, For Your Eyes Only was done by Bill Conti. He did the um, the Karate Kid soundtracks. That was a great soundtrack too. Um, in different, I think different certain people diff, different. I think mainly it was all done by John Barry, but certain. I know he didn't. I don't know if he did uh, Spy Loves Me. Not Spy Loves Me. I know that because I just said it was. Um, I meant Live and Let Die. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure on that. I know it was putting up. Paul McCartney and Wings that did this the uh, great soundtrack. Um Duran Duran that did um Oh View to a Kill, View to a Kill, that was his last film, that was a good film. Um all good films. it's hard to say what one one was my favourite because I thought all Roger Moore James Bond films were great. They're all good, you know. They just don't get boring. You can just watch them again well I can anyway as I say we've all got different opinions um, yeah and no, I'm absolutely glad to get a blu-ray box out of the lot well I say the lot it only went up to um, quantum of solace I think I had to buy the other two but I don't know Daniel Craig's James Bond yeah that was alright but they were okay for a different reason I just don't feel the James Bond connection with Daniel Craig I did not really like Casino Royale, and I did not really like uh, Quantum of Solace. Uh, just something about them just boring to me. I just thought they were boring. I mean, Skyfall was good. I've got to admit, Skyfall and Spectre were quite good films. Um, not the best of James Bond films, but they were good. Um, yeah. I'm so glad. When Pierce Brosnan took it over, they did not carry on very long with the BMWs. I just have to, I just have to mention that. I mean, what the fuck was they thinking? 
when they put him in a BMW, what, the Z3, was it? What? That, that ain't a James Bond car. That's a fucking three-piece suite on fucking wheels. It's a fucking bird, or a, a woman's car. Let's say that. I don't want to be sexist, but it's more of a woman's car. Come on. A little two-seater sports car. I know two-seater sports cars ain't women, but you look at it. I just think that was a horrible looking car. Probably the, one of the worst BMWs I've ever seen. In, in the next film, I think it was... Um, first film was GoldenEye. He had that stupid beauty salon BMW. Z5. Z3. Rather, Z3. I'm sure it was a Z3. Some beauty salon woman would drive. And then... Is it... The world is not enough. No, no. Tomorrow never dies. Sorry, his second film. Um, he drove a seven series BMW. That was more appropriate. You know, it was m a lot more appropriate than the bloody sh piece of shit that he drove in the first one. <coughs> okay, he drove a seven series. Yeah. Um, not the best James Bond car by miles. No, of course it ain't. Um, but then in, in the next one. Um, the world is not enough. He drove a Z8, did he? Did he drive a Z8? Looked a bit better in the Z3, but come on. Why would James Bond drive a fucking convertible? Prone to get more shot more, wouldn't you? You fucking it's just it's a convertible. James Bond wouldn't drive around in a fucking convertible. It's all this in it, fucking BMW wants to get in on the act, you know, we've had a Aston Martin. Had a Lotus. Now BMW wanted to get there. It's a German car. You know, it should be a British car. Aston Martin, a Lotus. But I've, I've never read the novels, though. I've never read any James Bond novels. But I'm I'm pretty sure that what um was it? Oh, Ian Fleming. Ian Fleming. Um, his James Bond car originally was a Bentley, wasn't it? I think it was originally a, supposed to be a Bentley and um, then it changed to a Aston Martin DB3 I'm thinking I'm, 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 that's what I've heard I, I think yeah I saw that in Top Gear actually <laughs> but if that's correct I don't know um, yeah but it's a British car you know it's a British agent driving a British car not a fucking German car then they saw their senses and in um, Pierce Brosnan's final film, he drove, went back to an Aston Martin. Was it a DB9? I can't remember. Was it? A, no, it was a Vanquish, wasn't it? It was a D, um, Aston Martin Vanquish. Yeah, that's much, much better, isn't it? In BMW. Um, and in um, Daniel Craig's one, then obviously it was Aston Martin all the way, weren't it? Um, yeah, he's. Yeah, because he drove, he drove the old, the DB5, so it's Pierce, Pierce Brosnan in, in open, I think it was the, yeah, he drove a DB5, the old DB, yeah. <sighs> yeah, that's interesting, that, though. Roger Moore never drove a D, um, Aston Martin in any of his films. I suppose that's good in a way, because I thought the Lotus was a nice car. I thought it was a better looking car, to be honest with you. You know, it's a nice sleek sports car. I do like, I really do like the Lotus Esprit. I mean, I think it's a cheaper car anyway. I think, the, and it looks better. It's probably a lot faster and all. I know it's the road out, road handling would be much better. But in the scenes, I mean, in the spy life, and it drives under the helicopter, and that was a great scene. I mean, <laughs> I'm sorry. <coughs> I'm talking about British cars, right? I mean, James Bond would have been a bit of a... No, nah, this wouldn't look right if he had to drive a full Cortina, would he? <laughs> Imagine if he had to drive a full Cortina. <laughs> he just wouldn't have the same impact, would it? You see this full Cortina driving down with machine guns coming out of him. Fucking the thing going up at the back. Nah. Could have been worse. Could have been a full Sierra. No, I've only I've had a couple of Sierras. Yeah, fucking. You look back at it, and you think, you know, you 
you know, now I'm, I'm going off at a tangent once again, you know, you remember your, everyone that drives, you, remember, you all remember your first car, you know, it was probably some second hand piece of shit like I had. Mind you, I've had a few second hand pieces of shit back in the day, so yeah, I've had a couple of Sierras, you look, you thought, you were excited to buy it, you know, you get your car and excited, and you look at the back of it, because everyone, you know, cars nowadays are just brilliant, you know, affordable, well, I say affordable, but, you know, a 10 year old car still looks good, you know, it ain't like a piece of shit that you bought back in the day, um, where you have to fucking fill in the rust holes and things, cars don't really rust these days, do they, they look, still look, the engine sounds good, Depends who's looked if their previous owners looked after it. I mean, cars last quite a long time these days, um, in the good hands, yeah. But when I started driving back in the early 90s, um, cars I owned, fucking hell. My first car was a Mark 1 Astra estate car in terracotta. <laughs> An old wire registration. And then I had a couple of Sierras, and you look back and you think, what a fucking pile of shit they were. God, fucking hell, you really do think, what a pile of shit they <laughs> he was driving around in. You, you think, oh, that's all I could afford back then. And they weren't cheap, you weren't, they was too, weren't cheap at all. They were about in the thousand pound mark, you know. Cars wasn't cheap, second hand cars weren't cheap back then. Um, well, you've got to remember, because you're buying in, you're buying in the 90s, you're buying 80s cars. So, I mean, sadly, you don't see a lot of 80s cars around now. You don't see hardly any Sierras and things like that anymore. Thank God. How would you have looked if you drove a Sierra Cosworth, though? If James Bond drove a Sierra Cosworth? I don't know, it wouldn't, I just don't think it would suit him, I don't know. He drove the Lotus, drove an Aston Martin, I think. It was appropriate for James Bond. Um, and I said, yes, okay, Roger Moore did not drive an Aston Martin in none of his James Bond films, but he did drive an Aston Martin DB5 in the Cannonball Run. And it looked, and it was DB5, it was, I think it was uh, the same car as. Um, it was in Goldfinger when Sean Connery drove it. I think it was the same car or definitely a look-alike because it did have some of the gadgets on it. Um, obviously in um, The Persuaders, he drove the DBS, the Aston Martin DBS. I think it was the DBS. Um, I think in, um, in The Saint, he drove the, I think it was a Volvo, wasn't it? He drove a, sport, a sporty Volvo, a 60s Volvo, I don't know. Couldn't really get into this. I didn't really watch the same. But I remember it, but I know he drove, a, I think he drove a Volvo. Um, a Volvo. Yeah. So, yes, Roger Moore, Sir Roger Moore, he's definitely going to be missed. You know, he was a great actor. And I've seen him in other films. Um, I think... He, it was great, very great. You know, he'd definitely be missed. And you know, it was a f he was he is the oldest, the eldest out of the James Bonds. Um, he was he is a year older than Sean Connery. A year older than Sean Connery. I did not know that back in the day. I thought he'd be younger if anything, if he's taken over the role. Um, yeah, and he pulled it off brilliantly. You know, brilliant films. Can always go back and watch them. Yeah, and yeah, it's a shame. Big shame. But unfortunately, this is what happens when you get older. And this is what we, we all got to look forward to in life. <coughs> so enjoy it while you can. Anyway, I think I've talked about this talked about Roger Moore now for about almost 25 minutes once again thank you so much for watching until next time and goodbye